Hi everyone, thanks for making the left turn for today, Saturday, September 29th, 2018. I'm George Ferrar. Welcome back to History Jacksonville. And today, I'm bringing you a show about Jacksonville in the 1960s. It was a wild decade. A lot was going on. Here we see the Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Coliseum under construction. It would open in November 1960, but look in the distance. You don't see a lot of the skyscrapers we see today. A lot was going on. The most development going on in Jacksonville probably since the 1920s. And so I'm going to bring to you today this look at Jacksonville in the 60s. I'm going to talk about all the changes that were happening, all the great things were happening, and we're going to talk about some people and some places and some events. And to top it all off, Starting off in 1960, we even had a new city hall. Now, of course, we know that the Coliseum that you just saw, that has long since been demolished. This city hall is slated for demolition at some point, I guess, in 2019. Here we see, before parking was extended, out over uh, the river. Okay, we see the Jacksonville City Hall. We see the Duval County Courthouse and we see the county jail. So we see uh, these, these buildings, the courthouse built in 1957, opening in 1958 in the jail later on, and then of course the city hall in 1960. So we, now we see from a distance, we see the parking lots along the river. These parking lots were constructed as part of a master plan to get rid of a lot of the uh, shipyards uh, that were along uh, the uh, the North Bank uh, of the uh, the St. John's River going through downtown. And here we see uh, a meeting that looks like uh, people gathering uh, to hear about plans. There were a lot of plans in the 1950s that were starting to come to fruition at, at the dawn of the 1960s. Here we see what we know now as the CSX building uh, under construction. So a lot of activity uh, along the river, of course, we see this now as a Times Union Performing Arts Center, but back then, uh, as we see in this 1960s uh, picture, we see it as a civic auditorium. And as I grew up, I knew it as a civic auditorium. So later on, there's a renovation, there are renovations, and it, it becomes known as the Times Union Center. And so here we see, back in the 19, early 1950s, what things looked like before all of this construction that you just saw happen. Now, there were certainly some underlying social issues going on amidst everything happening. Segregation, okay? People, uh, black people in their own waiting areas, white people in their own waiting areas. Whites eating with other whites and not with blacks. No integration of the races. And so there started to become protests. Here we see a uh, protest at the Morrison's Cafeteria downtown. Okay, so people are starting all over the country uh, are starting to protest in the South against the laws that enforced the segregation. Jacksonville being no exception, the Woolworth store Five and Dime store across from Hemming Park on Hogan Street, no longer uh, the building since having been demolished. That being no exception, the front lines of the civil rights era, okay? This was ground zero of civil rights in Jacksonville in August 1960, Axe Handle Saturday. African Americans sitting at whites only lunch counters within the store, the Woolworths had lunch counters. And so people, uh, there were people, of course, that were against this, violently against this. These were raw times, okay? As much as I'll talk positively about Hayden Burns with you today, he was the mayor when all this was going on. And uh, these were different times. A melee broke out. First, uh, uh, violent, violent white people that were downtown had axe handles without the blade and were beating first 
the civil rights demonstrators within the store. It broke out to anyone who was African American uh, in that vicinity of downtown. Imagine even today, I mean, Park, the the Snyder uh, Methodist Church. Okay, um, if you think of, of of what we know of today, even the geography of that area, because the Woolworth was where the um, where the uh, where our federal courthouse is today, generally in that in that area. Okay, it got written up in the New York Times. Violence flares in Jacksonville. Fifty injured as white gangs clash with Negroes. Sixteen year old stabbed. Angry bands of club swinging whites clash with Negroes in the streets of downtown Jacksonville today. This was in August 1960. At least 50 people were injured. 50 persons were injured. A white youth was stabbed, and two Negroes suffered wounds. Okay. Now, after all of this happens, uh, we have rallies because 1960 was a presidential election year. So, Senator John F. Kennedy, U.S. Senator John F. Kennedy, came to Jacksonville. There's a motorcade. Here we see two Kennedys, uh, lower, uh, his right would be our left, Hayden Burns, and then closest to us, uh, to Kennedy's um, uh, left, which would be our right, Lou Ritter. Okay, those people are going to figure prominently in the 60s. Okay, so here we have the rally. In Hemming Park, fall of 1960, Kennedy Johnson, okay, Kennedy for president, Johnson for vice president. Yes, you do see the Confederate flag there, okay? These are different times. These are people of different times, a different South, a segregated South, a segregated South where people knew their place, if you know what I mean. And there were even white people who knew their place. The good old boy system, okay? Things were done a little more informally, but we had Senator John F. Kennedy come to Hemming Park to speak in October of 1960. That was uh, a text of his speech. Here we have Vice President Richard Nixon also running for president. He also came to Hemming Park and campaigned, and people attended his rally. President John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy is elected president. In 1960, he takes office in 1961. This is a 1962 picture of the Main Street Bridge, downtown Jacksonville, uh, and we see the expressway. The Jacksonville Expressway Authority was building expressways all over the area, and everything was starting to hook up into the interstate system. I-95, Interstate 95. So these are cars that are heading towards uh, I-95 and South US-1 Phillips Highway. Here. We see, and, and, and it would take a while for I-95 to be constructed. Here we see the airport of the time. In 1963, this is a picture of Imason Airport, okay? A smaller, more intimate setting, don't you see? And look at smaller, more intimate, even in Hemming Park. Look at the gazebo, okay? What we now know as our city hall is a May Cohen's, okay? A department store from the old Cohen Brothers store, okay? It's now our city hall. We see in the distance the Universal Marion Building, and when you look at this, uh, a portion of this map here, you see the, the roads that existed at the time. And I-95 was under construction in the outskirts. So people were using the older roads, what we know as the older roads, the, and, and those were the roads to get around on. And we have the Jacksonville Zoo. We have uh, Sheik, Sheik <laughs> the uh, elephant, uh, named after uh, a city commissioner uh, from earlier in the 20th century, uh, St. Elmo Acosta, okay, that was his nickname, and so they named the elephant after him. Uh, and so, a lot of neat things going on. This is the Roosevelt Hotel in 1963. So, you see different times. Remember, this is before a lot of the more modern um, skyscrapers and hotels came to Jacksonville. Now, there was a tragedy. In November 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated. In 1963, there was a bad fire at the Roosevelt Hotel, since renovated to be the Carling. Uh, so, it was, it was the worst tragedy. It was the most deadly day in Jacksonville uh, in our history. Uh, people died. Uh, a lot of, uh, there were people that did not uh, get out uh, in time and were overtaken by the smoke. So as we pull back though, and speaking of smoke, we look in the distance. 
Now, you can't smell, obviously, these pictures or hear the noise of the traffic or, or all those kinds of things, but there was pollution also in the city, a lot of smell, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. So, now, here we have the old Independent Life building uh, back in 1963. Now, I'm going to start trying to talk with you about what was going on with the government at the time, and we'll talk about the Dallas Thomas Park and Marina that was built in 1963. It was pegged at the time as the world's largest and tallest uh, fountain. We know it as uh, St. John's River Park, otherwise known as Friendship Park, Friendship Fountain. The fountain, a big, big, big deal, built in 1963 and built on the South Bank. But now we have to ask ourselves, why do we not know it as the Dallas Thomas Park. Because Dallas Thomas, a city commissioner, he was, uh, I believe, a parks commissioner uh, for the, the, on the Jacksonville City Commission, which was a unique institution that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, he was indicted, okay? There was a grand jury. People were starting to smell um, bad deals and bad things going on. So a grand jury was impaneled and 11 of 21 public officials in Jacksonville were indicted for malfeasance crime. And in 1964, we had the distinction of having all 15 of our high schools disaccredited. Okay? That's a big deal because where do the workers of the future, the leaders of the future, the doers of the future come from? Your high schools. Amidst all of this, in 1964, in September 1964, along comes Hurricane Dora, which gives a, a rough time to North Florida. A pretty substantial hurricane. It came uh, across, going through around St. Augustine and then cutting across Clay County, cutting out towards Apalachicola, and then you turning back up uh, and going up uh, back into the North Atlantic after doubling back. Now, look at this. Flooding can happen downtown. This is the devastation wreaked by, um, by Dora. Look at the payphone there. <laughs> and, of course, we see the Main Street Bridge. And the, the headlines blared the loss, the cost to the county at the time. $100 million, 50000 for cleanup. LBJ flew down personally. President Lyndon Baines Johnson, who took office, after President Kennedy was assassinated, he flew into Imison, okay, to see the devastation that was um, brought upon North Florida, okay, a wide area of devastation. People lost power, trees down, lots of damage, and damage to some substantially, I believe there was some, a lot of damage in Mandarin that, that was damaging historical properties, and historical places. And there he is, uh, he was at the airport speaking, and here we see earlier him campaigning back years uh, before. Uh, now here we see him walking amidst the devastation. So he would be coming through Jacksonville again uh, later to campaign. And he was real. He was elected on his in, on his own as president. He was elected on his own as president in 1964 in a landslide. Now the Beatles also at that time, as LBJ was around, the people were cleaning up from the hurricane. The Beatles had gotten really popular in '64. Their appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show on CBS Television, and there they are being interviewed at a hotel, and there they are at the Gator Bowl performing. It was a boy band, and you know, I guess I try to look at things from what I would might look at it back as. Imagine, you know, let's say if you imagine the Backstreet Boys, or you imagine NSYNC from the 90s, these are my points of references, okay, really popular. But these guys broke through to big music. These guys really broke through to some real big hits. People loved them. People, my father was a big Beatles fan. I am a big Beatles fan. I was born in 75. They broke up in 69. Here's Hayden Burns. Now, he's aged. He's mellowed a bit. You know, things are starting to work themselves out a little bit on the civil rights front, not by a lot, but they're starting to try to start the desegregation. And we're going to get a new library. This is the old library, the old Jacksonville Public Library. You're looking at this from 2017. I took this picture in 2017. Now we see the library which replaced it. That previous library was built in the 1900s. And in 1965, we got this brand new library. And 
it was named the Hayden Burns Public Library. And it would be the downtown library that I would come to know growing up. This is an early picture of the library. It brings back memories. We now know it as the DuPont Center, the DuPont Center. Uh, in the early years of the 21st century, a new library was constructed. Here we see this plaque, and I'll come back to this. Take a look further down this area here, and look where it says City Commission of the City of Jacksonville. Now, you see the Mayor Commissioner Lou Ritter because uh, Hayden Burns has now gone off to be Governor of Florida. We see Dallas Thomas. We see J. Dillon Kennedy and other uh, city commissioners that were responsible for different areas of uh, responsibility, like utilities, uh, like uh, parks, things like that. Okay, and then there was a city council. Now, if there's a phrase I could pick that really defines what was going on with Jacksonville and the development and the growth that was coming upon Jacksonville, the demands that the people had, the demands that businesses had, the demands that we had to have for infrastructure to, to, to be able to have transportation, health, safety, education. All roads lead to Regency Square. In 1967, Regency Square Mall opened. Now, there were malls opening throughout the city. Phillips Mall in 1960, Normandy Mall in 1963. There was Roosevelt Mall, all these different places. But this is the big, this is the big one for Jacksonville, okay? You get a J.C. Penney, you get a Woolworth, Furchigates, May Cohen's, okay? Instead of shopping downtown, you go to Regency Square and you shop. It was opening in March of 1967, and so you have all of this demand. Now, all of this, though, is outside of what would be defined back then as the city of Jacksonville. Most of the area was the county, Duval County, run by a board of county commissioners. We think about county commissioners, you might think about St. John's County and think about uh, Clay County. It, run by uh, just a group of people that run the county. And, you know, there's there's a sheriff and there's a property appraiser and they have a jail and the city has a jail inside the city limits okay we think of downtown in the inner city now people decide to go to Tallahassee and here's a nice beautiful picture of the uh, state capital of Florida before this is back in the day when that was our capital building our functioning capital building there was no skyscraper capital people petitioned the legislature something called the Yates Manifesto and they say, you know what? There are problems in Jacksonville and Duval County. We want the power to fix it. And so power was bestowed to make it possible for there to be a campaign. And there was a proposal made that there would be a 19-member city council with uh, at large and district, a combination of at large and district members. The Duval County Board of County Commissioners would be totally eliminated. There would be a strong mayor. The police department, the city police department, would combine with the sheriff's office to form the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. The constitutional officers would remain. Jacksonville Beach, Neptune Beach, Atlantic Beach, and Baldwin would retain their autonomy. But there would be service agreements. So there was a big effort to professionalize things, to really um, create a transparent environment. Now. I say that there, there were efforts to, because as we'll see later, there are still challenges. So this referendum goes before the city and the county voters, and it passes. Some people didn't think it would pass. It actually passes. And so it has to be implemented. The mayor under the old system that had recently been elected, a judge named Hans Tanzler, was elected as the new uh, mayor for the entire city under this new system, and he would become the first mayor under the uh, consolidated government. He would have the huge task of working with the Jacksonville City Council and with the people of Jacksonville to get this government together and serving the people and doing what they campaigned for. Now here we see on October 1st, 1968, the changing of the signs there he is with Lee Meredith. She was performing at the Alhambra Dinner Theater. There's a time capsule. I know that there was a parade. 
And we became, at least at that point in time, the biggest city in the world. We rival some uh, some places up in Alaska that had a lot of land. And we've enlar- we enlarged the city to 826.5, it looks like, square miles. And we become, under this government, uh, a city that has a very large police force. It provides lots of services on a daily basis to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. Now, later on, you know, Hubert Humphrey comes to town to campaign. He's running for president in 1968, uh, Vice President Hubert Humphrey, but ultimately Nixon gets elected. And so we start to think about the 60s and where things have gone and what all has been happening. We go from, you know, a shopping district downtown more to a suburban way of living. And the city is trying to grow to accommodate. It's building roads, expressways. It's enhancing. It's it's building the government and really building the people up for some big things that are coming ahead. And we see here, as we look back, there's still the issues, the pollution, the smell. My dad used to call it the smell of money. These challenges were going to continue on into the 70s and the 80s. The economics were not going to be as good for us. But we're going to get skyscrapers, okay? In the 70s, we're going to start to get some really nice modern skyscrapers. Later on, there's going to be the Jacksonville Landing. But at this point in the late 1960s, going into the early 1970s, different times. Okay, At some point, Richard Nixon and, and the Republicans and the way things work out, the Democrats and Congress and everyone worked out a new deal on how railroading would be done in the country because of railroad failures of the, of the passenger companies. People started flying more. And this we see the Jacksonville Terminal, now currently in 2018, the convention center. We see it in its last years of operation. Now, that, will, that building will eventually be abandoned become the convention center later on. Because, hey, you know, people are flying in and out of Jacksonville, and guess what? In 1968, we got ourselves a new airport to replace Imason. We know it now as JIA, Jacksonville International Airport, dedicated Sunday, September the 1st, 1968, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, so I am going to leave you with one more thing. We see all these great places these great moments but we know in Jacksonville even today in 2018 and we will know beyond and see beyond that there are the neighborhoods that didn't quite get the attention and the interest from our political leaders and even dare I say from some of our even our common people I consider myself one so on the east side of Jacksonville in October 1969, there was a riot. And I'm going to leave us with this image before we take one last look at the 1960s at the end. And I think back to the Billy Joel song that came out in 1989, We Didn't Start the Fire. It's been burning since the world's been turning. I believe that the people of Jacksonville strove in the 1960s to deal with the changes, the social changes, the economic changes, the ways of living, the changes in culture, the changes in music. Everyone was really, had grabbed hold on this roller coaster and were hanging on for dear life. I didn't live in the 1960s. I wouldn't really come to know Jacksonville until the late 1970s, early 1980s. So these places, some of these places, were big in my life and would help to make me the person that I am today. I have a lot to be thankful for. And I want to thank you for watching this episode of History Jacksonville. Take it easy. See you later.